Hello, it's me, Katie Toppling, here again on my channel where I give all my own opinions and they don't represent anybody else but me. It's been a while since I talked about shielding clergy and you can go on my YouTube channel and find really, really uh, crackingly good interviews with clergy. I think we probably recorded those interviews back in something like week eight, nine or ten of the pandemic, thinking we were almost there. Uh, we're now in something like week 22 and pondering what it might mean. And for those for whom shielding has been part of their everyday life, their solo household or shared household, as you may know, shielding was officially paused on the 1st of August. What does that mean? Uh, it means that the government, under whatever boundaries they've come to, whatever conclusions they've come to, whatever science is behind the decision, um, has said that the legal protections around shielding households pauses, which means if you're a shielding household and, and first of August comes around, then your business, your employer can now legally say, I've made the workplace safe, as safe as I possibly can, so please come back to work. Now, it may be you are continuing to work in some way from home, uh, but your employer can now, from the 1st of August, legally, because shielding has been paused, it's no longer necessary to shield anymore from the government's point of view, uh, your employer can say, please come back to work. And if they can demonstrate that they have done what they can to put, shield, uh, to put COVID risk reduction measures in place, then you haven't really got a leg to stand on to say, no, I'm going to continue my own shielding because your employer can say shielding's been paused and I've done everything within my power to make sure that you're safe at work. So please come back to work. There's no legal protection if you choose to continue shielding because you've decided your common sense trumps whatever the government guidelines are saying. Some people have discovered that their own consultants have stepped in and written overriding letters to say, absolutely not, you can't go near people. And, and that's a very difficult legal gray area as to whose authority trumps whose. Clergy shielders, clergy shielding households, that's the bit that I'm mostly interested in, vested interest. The clergy shielders I talk with came together and wrote a collaborative letter signed openly by four people, Charlotte Cheshire, Jodie Stoll, Wendy Bray and me. When the letter went to the Church Times, as it happens, uh, I was on annual leave, so I wasn't able to have a follow-up conversation with the journalists. So only those three four named people, Charlotte, Jodie and Wendy, uh, were mentioned in dispatches in the Church Times article that came from that letter. The letter points out that some dioceses, that's the uh, ecclesiastical, the church area, the geography area, that a bishop oversees and therefore has in their, in their care uh, a whole bunch of clergy and lay people and everybody in between. Uh, some dioceses have been pretty good. I mean, it says a handful, I could probably count them on the fingers of one hand um, to say how many have been good. Bishops who have rung up or contacted their shielding households, clergy shielding households to say, how's it going? Uh, little little parcels of chocolates or, or little bits and bobs or a voucher or something that just says, I've noticed you. Pastoral letters that go out with the general information about guidelines for how we now safely or, or risk reducing open our church buildings and, and how we protect those who were in the CEV, the clinically extremely vulnerable categories, and now are technically still clinically extremely vulnerable but no longer required to shield in law. 1st of August, a magic number, and, and how we look after those folks who may turn around and go, it may well be legal, but I'm not doing it. And to go to those clergy shielders and say, you are not obliged to come out of your house. I quite understand how you might take a different view to the government's official line on pausing shielding. So some dioceses have been superb. Some dioceses have been ambivalent in noticing clergy shielding households. And when it's been pointed out to them, there's been an element of surprise. Surprise and fear are two keen weapons. I'm sorry, I'm a Monty Python fan. Don't get me distracted. 
fact that there have been a collection in the middle who have been ambivalent and surprised and a bit, oh, clergy shield, this is a thing. We thought the vulnerable people were all out there. We didn't realize they wore dog collars or had a household in that situation. And there's been a catching up process. Some, well, I'll quote the letter that Charlotte, Jody, Wendy and others wrote. A pressure to reopen buildings rapidly even when they themselves as clergy could not be there to oversee it safely and had to delegate to those for whom it may not be suitable. Emails from senior staff disavowing the need for any kind of protective equipment, masks or PPE. Other clergy bluntly told, you arrange your own cover if you can't come back. A few examples but the idea that clinically vulnerable households have been ignored in a desperate return to normal and that desire to get back to what we had far outweighing any kind of pastoral responsibility with this cure of souls shared by senior staff and incumbents and clergy who find themselves in that clinically extremely, extremely vulnerable category and are wondering hang on, we now need the ministry that we're expected to be extending to other people. There needs to be a consistent message across the whole country because some dioceses, frankly, are failing their clinically extremely vulnerable clergy households. We were shielding for really good reasons. We will continue to shield for as long as we can possibly get away with it because we're not convinced that COVID has actually gone on holidays. We don't think COVID went first of August, you say. Do you know what I could do with this sabbatical? Yeah, I'll back off for a bit. We are sick of hearing all oh, the viral load amongst the young is much easier to cope with. You should be fine. We're sick of hearing, well, it's only the disabled who are being killed off by it anyway, so that's not a problem. Thank you very much. That puts me in two categories, shooting somebody else in my household and the disabled who are disposable. But it's the clergy who are upheld as the ones who care for others some of them are saying, actually, some of us are not in a position to just willy-nilly launch ourselves back into physical proximity life again, no matter what the government think is right or wrong. And some dioceses just haven't seen or are willfully ignoring a whole bunch of very, very anxious, formally shielding clergy households. If you genuinely share the cure of souls with anybody in a dog collar, then bishops and your senior staff in the dioceses I could name but I won't, pull your pastoral finger out. Hand over the structural management to your diocesan secretaries, because I'm sure they're more than competent, and get back to being pastor and priest. Please notice your shielding clergy and their shielding households because we are all going through a whole extra level of anxiety and concern and worry and I know of a number who are on the point of walking away from the dog collar completely. I'm not going to name names. If you don't know your own clergy that well enough then tough. Clergy are already pulled in massive directions shielding household clergy are being told that they have no priestly use to anybody if they're not out there getting on with it. We're being told, put your shielding person at risk because ministry is far more important. And if our chief pastor, our bishop, in whichever diocese we're in, has not even noticed us, has not come to us and said, don't panic, I've got your back, then I kind of wonder what the point of having a priest, pastor, bishop is. You know who you are, and if you don't, you're going to find out sooner rather than later when your shielding clergy start dropping like flies. Your anxiety and stress, complete disillusionment with the system. It's just about being noticed and valued and not ignored, made to feel invisible or dismissed as being not useful to the system. Who amongst the House of Bishops is paying attention to the clergy households who were shielding and still 
choose to be doing so? What system is there out there to make sure that they're noticed and they're cared for and they're loved and they're appreciated and they're valued to counteract all the dreadful narratives that they're hearing from people? How are my bishops caring for my lovely clergy shielders who think that no one cares?